Okay, the first question is x plus 5 equals 20. So pause the video, try to solve for x, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so let's go over how to do this question. So we're going to start off with the basics and we'll get harder as we go throughout the video. And basically, we, we want to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. So in this case, the variable is x, and a variable is just another word for an unknown. So since we have x plus 5 and we want to get x by itself on one side of the equation, we want to do the opposite operation of addition, which is subtraction. So whatever we do to one side, we also have to do to the other side. Okay, so we have x plus 5 equals 20. We want to subtract 5 from both sides. And the answer here is x equals 15. Okay, the next question, a minus 4 equals 30. Pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. As always, what we want to do is we want to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. So it's a minus 4, so we have to do the opposite operation of subtraction, which is addition. And whatever we do to one side, we also have to do that to the other side. We would want to add 4 to 30, and so our answer, a equals what? Hopefully you got a equals 34. Okay, the next question, 4b equals 40. So try to solve for b and then we'll go over it. Pause the video now and try it out. Okay, so this case, what we have to see is that 4b, that's the same as just saying 4 times b. So the object is always to get that variable or the letter by itself on one side of the equation. To do that, we need to take the opposite or the inverse operation. Another word for that is the reciprocal operation. And since it's 4 times b, the opposite of multiplication is division. We want to divide by 4. And whatever we do to one side, we always have to do it to the other. So 4 divided by 4 just equals 1. 1 times b is just b. There's no need to write the 1 here. So we can rewrite this. We bring our b right down here. And 40 divided by 4 is just 10. So the final answer here is b equals 10. Okay, the next question, b over 11 equals nine. Try to solve for b here, pause the video, give it a try, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so in this case, b divided by 11, in order to get that b, we're gonna have to get rid of the 11. And since it's divided by 11, we have to do the opposite or reciprocal or the inverse, a bunch of words for the same thing. We have to do that opposite operation. And the opposite of division is multiplication. So we're gonna have to multiply by 11. And whatever we do to one side, we also have to do it to the other side. So over here, we've got 11 divided by 11. They cancel out. So we're then left with the B. Now, nine times 11 is 99. So the correct answer here is B equals 99. Okay, the next question is 3y plus 4 equals 25. So pause the video, try this out, and as always, we'll go over it. This is a little bit different, but hopefully you're, you got the idea here, and if not, don't worry about it. We're going to go over how to do it right now. But whenever you've got a question like this, again, we always are trying to solve for y throughout this whole video. We always want to solve for the variable, and in this case, we want to first get rid of the 4 here before we do anything with the three. And since it's three y plus four, we want to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. Whatever we do to one side, we also do to the other. So the four is gonna cancel out. And let me rewrite what we've got. So rewriting this, I'm left with three y equals 21. Now hopefully you recognize that three y is the same as saying three times y. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So to get the y by itself, which is the goal, we want to divide by three. Whatever we do to one side, we also do to the other. So on the left-hand side, three divided by three is gonna cancel out. Now we just have to figure out what's 21 divided by three. Hopefully you know that that's seven. So the correct answer here is just y equals seven. Okay, so the next question is two x minus eight equals 10. So go ahead and pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so there's a shortcut to solving this for x. If you didn't see it, that's okay. You don't have to use the shortcut to get the right answer. What I want you to see here is that if we look at all of the numbers, we see a two, we see an eight, and we see a 10. So we can actually divide each number by two and we can get a much, much simpler equation to work with. So two divided by two is just x. Eight divided by two is four. 10 divided by two is five. So now we're just left with something, x minus four equals five, and this equation is much simpler to deal with. Now we just have to say to ourselves, to get x by itself, we have to do something with the four here. So it's x minus four, so we have to add four to get rid of it. Whatever you do to one side, you also do to the other. 
and x equals 9. If you didn't do it this way, that's okay. You didn't have to do the shortcut method. As long as you got 9, you probably did it the right way. Okay, your next question is 5 over a equals 30. So pause the video, you know the drill, try it out, and then we'll go over it. There's several different ways to approach this question. Regardless of how you did it, let me show you an easier way, I think, to think about it. We want to get a by itself. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say, well, we had 5 over a, so let me multiply by a on both sides of the equation. I did that because then after I rewrite it, what I'm going to have is 5 equals 30a, or 5 equals 30 times a, however you want to say it. So now I can divide by 30, and whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So this is going to give me 5 over 30 equals a. What I can do now is I can simplify this fraction, right? So I can divide by 5 on top and divide by 5 on the bottom. And if I do that, I'm going to be left with 1 over 6 equals a. Okay, and if you did your answer in your calculator, if you left it as a decimal, then you would have got something like this 1.6 six 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 and a bunch of sixes here on and on and on and on okay so the next question is 11b plus 30 equals negative 10b so for the sake of simplicity let's say try to leave your answer in a fraction but if you get a decimal that's fine too but i think fractions are easier to work with here but pause the video try to solve for b and then we'll go over it. This one's a little bit different. Probably a couple different ways to approach this here, but I think what the easiest thing to do would be is to get both of the variables on the same side, all right? Or both of the terms with variables on the same side. So we've got a minus 10b on the right-hand side of the equation. If I add 10b, that's going to clear this all out over here, and we're going to have to add 10b to the left-hand side of the equation. 11b plus 10b is going to give us... 21b plus 30 equals what? Equals zero. So now I want to clear the 30 over to the right hand side. I just do the opposite operation since it's plus 30. I do subtraction. So I have 21b equals negative 30. So now since it's 21 times b, I want to divide by 21. Whatever you do to one side, you do it to the other as well. So then when I rewrite this, I'll have b equals negative 30 over 21. Now to put this in simplest form, we can just divide a 3 out of both terms. And if I do that, I'm left with negative 10 over 7. Okay, so the next question is 8 plus 2 over 4p equals 3. Try to solve this for p, and then as always, we'll go over it. So go ahead, pause the video, try it now. Okay, so as always, there's several ways to approach this, but I'm going to show you what I take to be the easiest way. So since we have 8 plus 2, we can subtract 8 from the left-hand side, and also then we'll have to subtract 8 from the right-hand side. So we would then have 2 over 4p equals negative 5, right? Because 3 minus 8 gives us negative 5. So now what I would do is I would want to target this p and try to pull it out of the bottom part of the fraction, right? I would just multiply both sides by p. And as always, I'm doing that because p divided by p is going to cancel out. So I now have 2 over 4 equals negative 5p. Now I can divide the negative 5p out of here, or I'm sorry, just divide the negative 5 out of here, leaving the p, and here's what that would give me. So that would give me negative 2 over 4 times 5, and this isn't a decimal, this is supposed to be multiplication. We can actually now divide a 2 out of the top and out of the bottom because of this 4 here. So rewriting it a final time gives me negative 1 over 10 equals p. All right, and if you left your answer as a decimal, you probably got negative 0.1, so that's also the right answer. So if you like this video, you might like my GED math practice test. I have a really quick version in eight minutes. It'll help you see where you're at and see what else you need work on for GED math so you can get a high score or at least pass whatever your goal is. And thank you for watching the video. Really appreciate it, and I wish you the best of luck.